Hey YouTube, welcome back to The Brown Jet. I'm Sam and I want to thank you for your continued support of this channel. We're on the road to 100 subscribers, so if you wouldn't mind, smash that subscribe button, do your part to help us get there. As you know, we have the Uber Eats Investment Portfolio Challenge going on, and if you'd like to participate in that giveaway where you can win 1% of that portfolio, please check the link in the description below. And with that being said, let's get on to today's video. But first, if you'd like to help out the channel, please like and subscribe. By subscribing and enabling your notifications, you make sure that you don't miss any of this life-changing content. Each of these videos also takes many hours to create, and doing this will go a long way in getting exposure for this community so that it continues to grow. All right, so today I wanted to talk about my weight loss journey, what it took and how long it took, as well as how you can implement the same thing in your life. Whenever you're starting to partake in a journey like this, you have to have a strong why. So what's your why? Now, if you just say, oh, it would be a nice thing to do, every single person says that. They say, oh, well, it would be nice if I lost 10 pounds. It would be nice if I lost 20 pounds. Well, let's be honest here. If, if that's how you feel about it, and, and if you are one of those people who've done that, you're never gonna accomplish that goal. My why was I just got out of a very toxic relationship and I wanted to change my image. At the same time, I had a lot of friends who were in the fitness industry and whenever I'd hang out with them, I'd always feel like I was kind of out of shape. Even though I've been going to the gym since 2005, I felt that when we were in a room together, you really couldn't tell that I was going to the gym because I was overweight. And for so many years, I would do what's called yo-yo dieting, where I would lose 10 pounds and then I'd gain 10 pounds back and then I would lose 15 pounds and then I would gain 15 pounds back or even more. So I never really moved the needle anywhere. And I would be constantly working out because I really enjoyed going to the gym and lifting weights. But every time I would leave the gym and let's say I'm in a mall with the rest of society, you couldn't tell that I went to the gym because I wasn't fit. I had a lot of muscle, but it was covered by a lot of fat. And for me, I wanted to look good. So that was my why. I was sick and tired of sucking in my stomach whenever I was in a photo or having to wear flashy clothes to hide my horrible physique. Now, that all changed in 2018. I was the heaviest I have ever been. I was around 200 pounds. So I went onto YouTube very late at night, as most people do, and I was looking up ways to lose weight in a very short period of time. The most compelling thing that popped up was something called a water fast. Now I'm in no means recommending that you do a water fast. This is something that I did a lot of research on before going into it. Um, it was very stressful. Um, the videos that I watched recommended that you started off by not drinking water for about seven days to, some people did it up to 28 days, and then you slowly introduce food back in. So I remember I had read up on this, did a lot of research, and then um, two weeks later, I actually put it into practice. So I came home from work as a sales rep, and I had just finished a dinner meeting. I ate as much as I could, of course, because the food's really, really good. And then I decided that I was only gonna drink water for the next 10 days. And the first two days were super difficult. I had headaches, I had cravings. I don't even know why, but I went on YouTube and I watched food challenges, like how many Big Macs could you eat in a day? And you know that didn't help, but somehow it made me feel a little better. I also had a lot of energy because I wasn't eating. So what happens is your digestive system shuts down and you the energy that will be used to digest food, nothing's happening to that energy. So I actually had a lot of trouble sleeping at night because I had a lot of excess energy. Now, I would still go to the gym, so during this water fast of 10 days, I worked out every day. And the reason for that is, whenever you're losing body fat, or whenever you're losing weight, your body will always lose the least taxing tissue. So muscle is much more taxing on your body because it requires calories to, for your body to hold on to it. So if your body has a choice between burning fat or muscle, it will always pick muscle. Your body doesn't care how good you look. Your body only cares to survive. So 
In order for me to convince my body to hold on to that muscle, I had to give it a reason to hold on to that muscle. So I was continuing to lift the same amount of weights as I was before the water fast. And this made sure that whenever I was losing that weight, it was predominantly coming from fat. And I verified this when I did a DEXA scan and I went from 30 something percent body fat all the way down to 25%. And I also lost 18 to 20 pounds overall. So once that was completed, my next step was I didn't want to, I didn't want to continue this water fast for another 10 days. I don't think doing that for a long period of time is very healthy. So I wanted a way that I can make a sustainable change to my life. So because I have a lot of friends who are in the fitness industry, I consulted with them and found out how many calories that I should be eating on a daily basis. It came out to around 1800 calories. And that doesn't mean that you have to cut out your favorite foods. So one of my favorite foods is actually a Big Mac combo from McDonald's and that comes up to around 900 calories. Now, I told myself that if I did an hour of cardio every day and I trained in the gym and lift, lifted heavy for two hours a day, then I could reward myself with a Big Mac meal every single day. And I did this because that was my way of rewarding myself. Now, it is so important that you have a lifting routine because of what I mentioned. You want your body to hold on to your muscle mass. You wanna make sure that if you need to burn extra calories, that you're doing cardio. And if you're doing all of these in succession, so you have the caloric deficit with food and cardio, you have um, a great lifting routine, so you're convincing your body to hold on to your muscle, then if you do this for a long period of time, what will happen is you will notice that your body will lose a lot of fat and in fact mine actually even gained some muscle so at the end of six months of doing this day in and day out i did a dexa scan every few months and it went down from 25 percent to 21 percent to 17 percent and finally to 12 percent at 135 pounds within six months and one of the things that was so important for me is i did not want to go back to how i looked back then i would look at myself in the mirror every day and I was happy with what I saw. And I was, ne I was never happy with the image that I saw back when I was around 200 pounds. So I wanted to make sure that this was sustainable and unlike my previous diet, I didn't wanna go and yo-yo back to 200 pounds. So I wanted to make sure that I made changes to my lifestyle. So every day going forward, I still continued those routines of waking up every morning and measuring my weight. I also made sure that I recorded this in an app called Happy Scale. I actually brought this up in a video that I posted, I think a week and a half ago on my channel. One of the other things that I was doing was I still tracked how many calories I was consuming. So once you reach your target weight, so in my case, I had reached 135 pounds and I saw morning abs and I was super happy. And what happened for me is I travel a lot for work, or I, at least I used to travel a lot for work prior to everything going on with the pandemic. Now, I want to make sure that every time I went on holidays after, I was still going to follow the same principles that got me to this weight. Your, your journey isn't over the moment you hit your weight. A lot of people make the mistake of dieting really hard and exercising until they get to the body they want, and then they don't do what's necessary to sustain it. So. I'll give you an example. In December of last year for New Year's, I went to Mexico with my family. When I was booking my hotels, I made sure I booked a hotel with a gym and I trained every single day, no matter what. Whenever they were out about in the market in Mexico City or in Cancun, I made sure that before I did anything else, I went and got my workout in, I got my cardio in. I was a little more splurgy with my calories because I was on vacation, but I, I didn't go all out and just eat like a pig. So you have to keep in mind, there's a balance to these things. And yes, you can go a little overboard on vacation, don't worry about it, but do whatever you can to make your life easier when you get back. And for me, I actually love working out and I just finished working out, I just had a protein shake. This is something that has become part of my lifestyle and I can't imagine going back to the person I was in 2018. And even in 2018, it wasn't like I didn't go to the gym, I just didn't take care of myself because I would work out every single day, but I wouldn't do what was necessary with my calories. So I was eating somewhere around 3,000 to 4,000 calories daily, 
and now I eat somewhere in the range of 23 to 2,500 calories. Back as early as a couple years ago, I would literally eat whatever I saw. So I would wake up in the morning, go to the cafe, pick up two croissants, pick up chocolate milk, have McDonald's for lunch, have Taco Bell or pizza or whatever garbage for dinner. And no wonder I was overweight. And now I'm still able to eat some of those foods that I really, really enjoy, but in moderation. Now, if I have a McDonald's combo, that's my only cheat meal for the day. And I understand that some of you will look at this and go, wow, this guy's giving fitness advice and he's eating McDonald's. But at the end of the day, it's whatever's gonna work best for you. If I had to eat chicken breast and salads while doing all that strenuous activity for six months, I wouldn't have been able to make it. So I did what worked best for me. I don't even like doing cardio, but I would wake up and do an hour on the treadmill or an hour on the Stairmaster, and that wasn't enjoyable for me either. But I chose to reward myself so that I had something that kept my motivation high. Also, I have a lot of discipline. So for me, I'm naturally somebody who's able to work at something if I'm seeing results. And I was seeing results every week because I was tracking my weekly trends for how my weight was going and I would keep seeing it was going in the direction that I wanted. And this is why I think that it's so important to measure your weight on a daily basis. So what you do is you take away those fluctuations and you notice that your weight is actually going in the right direction. So that's positive and that is what keeps you motivated. I removed all of my pictures from Instagram of me when I was at heavier weight but I still keep them to look at from time to time to remind me of where I was and how far I've become. So any time that I've, I've you know, felt being lazy and said, okay, well, you know what, maybe I'm gonna splurge. And that's not to say that one day, like let's say you have a 2000 calorie budget that you're allowed to eat with, that you can't eat 3000 calories or 2800 calories. It's just reduce the number of times you're doing that. And when you do go over your calories on one day, try to account for it by eating less the next day. So when me and my friends, Anthony and Jake, we would go and play poker in Niagara, every time I have a bad session, I would always want to eat a Big Mac meal. So for some reason, it just made me feel better. And when I would do that, I'd be over my calories by 900. So what, I would, what would I do? Well, I would do more cardio the next day and I would eat less the next day to make up for it. And obviously that's not the healthiest thing in the world, but it's what worked best for me. So I recommend that you do what works best for you. And the things that I want you to take away from this video is that it, that it is possible to lose a lot of weight in a short period of time and do it in a healthy and sustainable way. And the way to do that is by one, being in a caloric deficit. So that's by reducing how much you're eating and tracking it, as well as adding cardio to complement that deficit. Two, by having a great lifting routine you don't have to work out every day. You can work out probably five times a week and still keep the muscle. You just have to make sure that you're lifting just as heavy as you did before. And then three, you wanna make sure that you're monitoring your progress. So keep tracking it. This is what's gonna keep your motivation high. And then finally, it's just time. You have to be consistent. You didn't, you didn't wake up one day and you weren't 30 pounds overweight. And just like that, you're not gonna wake up tomorrow and after one day of eating a caloric deficit, you're not gonna be down 30 pounds. And the people who want it the most have a compelling reason why. Find out what your compelling reason is. And with that being said, I really wanna thank you for watching this video. Just a reminder, I am not a licensed healthcare professional. Please consult one of those before embarking on any diet or exercise plans. I really hope that this motivates you. And if I've motivated at least one person, I've done my job. And if you could really help me get on that road to 100 subscribers, I would really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button below. And until next time, have a good one, guys.